Salutations everybody, it is Maddie here today. Xbox released a game. It's a first party game, let's go. Now I know Game Pass has hard carried this year. We all know we were expecting Redfall, Starfield, those plans fell apart. They were pushed into 2023. So it was on Game Pass to do a lot of the carrying into the later part of the year where people were gonna be looking for things to play on their Xbox. However, one of Xbox's first party studios is stepping up to the plate big time with some experimental titles, and that's Obsidian Entertainment, one of my favorite game developers of all time. You already know, Fallout New Vegas, little Alpha Protocol love up in this building, South Park Stick of Truth, they're fantastic developers no matter what avenue they go down. However, underneath the Microsoft banner, we've seen them do numerous experiments now, and both of them are dropping with full releases this holiday season. The first one up is Grounded, and that's what we're gonna be talking about today. Now, Grounded is a bit of an asterisk next to the first party release. It's been around for some time. It was released in Xbox Game Preview a couple of years ago, so you've been able to play in its early access state. For me, I tried it out, and I was very surprised by how good it was given the team of people working on it was about 13. And when you look at what Fallout 76 was at its time, Obsidian kind of humiliated Bethesda a second time in a row, you know, because they did it with the Outer Worlds when 76 launched and people were going, this is what we want from Bethesda. And then they came out and said, we're also going to do our own survival game and it's going to be balanced and fun and creative and unique. It was a really awkward situation between these two companies and now that they're underneath the same banner, it's even more hilarious. But now Grounded is out and it's 1.0 release. That doesn't mean updates are stopping for the game, but it does mean this is it like this is the base game moving forward and i played it for a while this past week i got an early access review code played it a little on my own and said you know what as much as i'd like to meet the embargo that'll certainly help the performance of the channel i'm not gonna do that here because i want to give this game a fair shake i don't think it plays best in solo i wanted to make sure i played it with a squad so i waited for the full release it's out now you can download it on xbox you can download it on pc it's available in game pass try it out for yourself see what you think but these here are my thoughts and i'm excited to share them so ladies and gentlemen if you're new here you're into xbox when they do start releasing games i swear this will be the place to be just give it a little bit of time with that ladies and gentlemen let's get started this game i actually really like i was super surprised by this last night i was up till 5 a.m that has not happened since elden ring now i'm not saying i like grounded as much as elden ring but there is an addictive quality here within grounded and i think i got my finger on the pulse as to what that is Perhaps the most appealing part of Grounded beyond its universe and its presentation, which I'll get into, is the fact that I know this game has a conclusion. I've grown up with Minecraft, as many of you have. I've ebbed and flowed between all these survival game competitors, the forest, Valheim, so on and so forth. I've seen plenty of them, and it's a fantastic genre, but I've sort of had my fill at this point it's not something i was ever head over heels in love with so once i had my fill it was easy for me to transition to other genres and play more of those games so when it came to grounded what was really appealing to me is there's a main story in this very interesting world where you've been shrunken down in a backyard and the hows and whys of this all is what pushed me forward of course it's obsidian so you know there's going to be clever writing clever world building and certainly this game is no anomaly it absolutely has that but to me that's what kept me hooked was knowing that i'm not just here building a house again farming resources dying over and over reacquiring materials what was great about this game for me was knowing that there was a finish line and if i wanted to call it quits i could that felt great and it made exploration and the gameplay loop all the more rewarding for me personally that's not because i'm short on time i'm a big believer that people in my position should be playing as many games as possible but for me i'd like to spend it you know playing more trails honestly <laughs> so having a game like this exist i appreciate it more because it has a sense of finality to it so let's talk a bit about the story as you all know with grounded its big selling point is the universe you are shrunken down in a backyard so you're going to be crawling across this backyard and seeing juice boxes soda cans 
telescopes that all look gargantuan compared to you who have been shrunken down to the size of an ant. And your biggest foes, speaking of ants, are gonna be bugs, huge spiders, koi fish in the pond, it's gonna be a ladybug, a stink bug, so on and so forth. While the mechanics are relatively familiar and you've seen them in other games, it's, it's sense of self is really what propels it to the next level. Because of its universe, because of its world, I'm much more invested in it. It also helps that this game is relatively polished in most areas. I will say that the giant bug AI, we'll call it, breaks pretty frequently. They'll just sometimes walk in place, they'll get caught on things, and that'll just happen over and over and over. But outside of that, this game runs well, it's downright gorgeous, and I was really impressed by it. This could be the future of Xbox. And the reason I wanted to talk about it beyond my adoration of the game was this is what we should be looking for from future Xbox first party studios is of course you get Obsidian to make the big budget AAA RPGs that everyone knows and loves from them. But now you have a game that has in the last two years seen 10 plus million players that probably wouldn't have existed without Xbox, because they have the money, because they have the cash influx, they're able to say, okay, we don't have to put all our chips on the board for an Outer world sequel. We can try this game over here, Grounded, and see how it works with 12 people. And they made something spectacular. And certainly they've made all of their money back and then some when it comes to this game. To me, that experimental nature makes this game all the more alluring. I would say just give this game a try simply because you can get a taste of what's to come from Xbox Game Studios. Not only in the sense of quality, but also in the sense of experimentation, the sense of uniqueness. This, I didn't think this was kind of a possible idea, but hey, it exists and it's great and it's popular. Now the story itself takes you through a number of labs. You're shrunken down, you meet this robot named Burgle, his memories are scrambled, and he sends you out into the backyard to find various super chips. As he finds these super chips, you put together the mystery of why you were shrunken down, why there are kids here. And what I love about this game, perhaps more than anything, is not necessarily the narrative being told to you, while it is actually surprisingly good, it's actually the fact that there is a ton of environmental storytelling. And as you crawl through these labs, you're gonna see pictures of Wendell, the main scientist who's behind these experiments and how they came to be. You're gonna see notes on the wall, putting things together. I just gotta shout out the environmental storytelling here. It's a surprisingly good quality of the game when you start to get into the interiors. Exterior wise, this game is so unique. So there are tons of biomes, despite it being the same backyard. Just the way they handle it and flavor it up works so well. So the underwater biome is a koi fish pond in the backyard. And you'll just swim through it. You're going to fight tadpoles. The, the big boss, again, is the koi fish. You're going to find lily pad wax for materials. under there. It's just so cool how they built this world out. I just love how it feels like I could step outside my house right now and look at my backyard and go, that is the world of Grounded. I just think it's such a creative and inventive idea at the end of the day, and I can't get enough of it. So the world does a lot of the heavy lifting, but the gameplay is, is no thing to scoff at. It's solid. I have to say that I'm very impressed by things like the first person combat. The reason I am is because when I play these online games, things like hit detection, enemy responsiveness always feels super dodgy. I was very pleasantly surprised that when engaging with these huge bugs, that it was feeling solid, especially when you have a team of four and everyone's got big clubs and you're just beating these spiders over the head. When they get stunned, it's a good feeling of like, yeah, for all that tormenting you did, now you're gonna get it. How's that feel? Speaking of which though, probably my biggest complaint with this game is spawns. Okay. There are some times I will be building a base, here comes a spider, the gang goes out, beats up the spider, get off my block, see you later, okay, back to work, oh my god, another spider, a third, a fourth spider, and they just keep coming and coming over and over, and it's just, oh my god, enough. So eventually what we did was we actually sealed the spider gate with a bunch of grass walls, and I came to appreciate it again. I went, okay, that was kind of frustrating because we were getting harassed endlessly, but we literally sealed them in their own home now and we stopped getting harassed. So it was a really cool moment of creativity. 
Speaking of which, what I love is in this world, you're going to discover locations. Now, it's not something like Fallout or Elder Scrolls will say where you discover a location and there's lore there. Occasionally, there actually will be that, but most times it's a soda can. It's just, oh, cool, a can. What I love is these are landmarks for you to really build around. So for my squad and I, we built a whole entire fortress around a soda can. So the soda can gives us shelter and protection. The entrance is small, where it means no matter what big baddie comes our way, we can hide inside there and just wait them out. But what it means as well is that on the exterior, we built a second floor that connects to the can that gives us a good vantage point. We have our smithy up there, our dew collector up there. All this type of stuff is there and it makes it where it's now this much more expansive base built off of creativity. Now look, I'm not that person who, for example, I've seen Fallout 76, Fallout 4 where People have really impressive bases. I can't sit here and act like I make pretty bases. I make practical bases, though, and I'm really proud of my practical soda can base. Thank you very much. Now, this is also a survival game. And yes, it's taken me this long to get into the survival aspect because it's stuff that I think you're familiar with. You have your health meter. You have your stamina meter. These will gradually go down over time because of your hunger and your thirst. There are accessibility options for you to work around this type of stuff. You can turn on creative mode and decide not to deal with any of this BS. You can play it on mild, which is what we personally did because on medium, again, we were getting endlessly harassed and it was a little annoying where we felt we had to gradually scale up. That's just my personal opinion on things, but there are a lot of ways to tackle it where if you just want to go out there and build, you can do so. If you just want to experience the story, you can do so. And if you genuinely want to just go through the whole game and really have it super tough, you can crank up the difficulty a lot. There's a lot of ways to play this game and I think that is much appreciated. Just to me, I don't mind if the game is a little unbalanced because it recognized its own issue and provided me a solution in being able to change difficulty settings on the fly and it applies to the whole server. Speaking of servers, one thing I really love about this game that I don't think is talked about enough is there is a shared world option. So of course you could have it be the type of world where you host it and when you're online, everyone joins your world. But what's great about Grounded is they offer a shared world option where your friends can join and play in that world whenever, even if you are offline. So there is progress being made. Like right now, as I am recording this video, I could have friends farming materials, putting it in chests. So when I sign on later tonight, there has been progress made. Very Minecraft inspired. It is 100% a great addition to the game. I again, don't play many survival games. So if this is something that is commonplace, I apologize for my ignorance in advance. But I do think with my experience here in Grounded, it was really cool to know that we weren't all bound to each other's schedules that we could hop on with two of us one of us three of us up to four of us that's the max and we could just play in that same world and the progression i love the progression here this is probably my other favorite part of the game is that gradual building to the next tier of equipment so each of the equipment is separated into tiers one two three and so on and what happens is as you take on these bigger baddies and you brave the depths of the backyard, you're going to get things that start off as like acorn armor, but then you'll scale up to ladybug armor. And then you'll get a, a mosquito skewer, which is the, the beak of a mosquito, but you'll turn it into a rapier. That type of creativity that just speaks to me. It's absolutely fantastic. And each set of armor, each weapon has their own buffs debuffs stats that you pay attention to so it's a very light rpg in that regard something you may want to pay attention to because when i had done a behind the scenes preview of pentiment one of the things that obsidian had said was it was rpg light this might be a good taste of that this isn't a full-on obsidian rpg but it does have elements of an rpg there which made me appreciate it more as like an rpg aficionado i'm a freak for this genre so seeing little stat changes like that amongst all the other mechanics they offer was a pleasant surprise when you're going around the world completing quests such as daily quests or looting it out in the open world, you'll get a thing called raw science. Raw science can be spent at a computer that allows you to unlock fortified bases and you can unlock more health, mutations. Mutations is a big part of character builds as well. For example, there's one you can unlock by just playing the game. When you resurrect your friend for the first time, it will unlock right then and there. So you'll be able to resurrect friends quicker and you can choose and customize your build a little bit more. But the raw science is at the core of the gameplay loop. As you get further and further in the story and you unlock more labs, you're going to unlock more things to spend your raw science on. This game is also one of those glorious achievement games where as you complete milestones in the story, you get a hundred gamer score. 
awesome. Love to see that. So yeah, all in all, I really like Grounded. I like it a lot more than I thought I would. I'm really sticking with it here. And again, I think it's that finality it has, that conclusion I know it has that makes me go, I want to go in on this. I want to explore the mechanics because I know there is a end point here and I appreciate it for that. So with that, ladies and gentlemen, those are just my thoughts on Grounded. I'm looking forward to seeing yours in the comments down below. Be sure to fire away. Other than that, follow me on Twitter, follow me on Instagram. Those links are in the description down below. And a big thank you to all the patrons, all the members who continue to support the hell out of the content here. Stay sexy, stay active. I love you all. Peace.